Welcome back, everyone, to uh, Zero K Expedition Matches. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fear, whichever you prefer. And we are back to Vanilla Zero K with a match between Dan Warrior and Izzeride on Fallendale. Going to be rovers against Anthbots. And we saw a lot of this map in the tournament, actually, though this was played a month or so before I think the tournament started, even. This is from a little while ago. Yeah, it's about a month, month or two ago. So this was played. This was played when the tournament, or before the tournament started, but we have seen a lot of this matchup in the tournament. Or at least last, yesterday we saw a bunch of this matchup. And, actually, the tournament, Lobster Roll Weekly. Lobster Roll Weekly, Week 4, Fallen Dell came up a few times. Not like Week 3, where it was like Call of Dream and Red Common and nothing else. No, Fallen Dell came up a few times, but it was alongside a bunch of other maps. But yeah, Rover versus Anthbot, I don't remember if we saw that specific matchup. We saw like... Rover's tanks, Ampoppy tank, Cloaky V tank, Ampoppy Cloaky. Ampoppy Rover will be interesting. He's arrived expanding quite a bit faster than their opponent going for Archer Defense. Is that going to come in in time? Yeah, the Archer should come in in time. Mizride should be able to take care of that Scorcher, and that will. I'll be an effective defense, because that Scorcher would have been a problem otherwise. Oh, Dan Warrior trying to be clever, going to the side. Ah, I think he could have pulled it off, but oh well. I like to try to go around the side and come around the back. Maybe take out the Archer that way, or just avoid the Archer completely and see what's in the rest of the base. There is, however, a Scorcher over on the other side of the base that can check things out. Possibly get rid of one of the 3.5s. Actually, yes, get rid of one of the 3.5s. Or, maybe? It's gotta be careful. It's not really the main goal. Oh, but it does! Gets rid of one of the 3.5s. Dan Warrior now with a slight economic advantage as a result, but it's still, it's just slight. I mean, that'll be rebuilt quickly. So in fairness, that is still pretty good. Although both Scorchers have now died. But hey, Izzerad having been knocked back a little bit economically speaking, like five metal per second for a good minute or so is gonna be, gonna be a blow. It's not nothing. I mean, it's a question of what Dan Warrior does to take advantage of this timing, because, you know, they could set up another mason, start building more metal extractors. Got a nice opening with a lot of pressure applied. So, yeah, just get... Just push that into expansions. And it really press that economic advantage you've just given yourself. Yeah, so with that... Yeah, for those of you wondering, these requests, they came from a while ago, but I haven't had a chance to get to them because Lobster Roll Tournament started. Although I won't be able to do the entire tournament on Saturday. It's, I will, I'll be able to do some of it. I. It's going to be... I'll, I'll mention it during the actual tournament, but yeah. I can start it, but I won't necessarily be able to finish it if, it's, if it goes long. At least not then. I'll finish the rest off replays. But yeah, it, it's kind of hard to find time for the request matches right now just because like I said there is a weekly tournament going on for another five weeks or six weeks so that does kind of cut into it all right oh are we going mono archer is that what we're having here is right now that's what's getting bulkheads as well actually it's just the one just the one archer yeah it's not mono archer I mean I guess mono archer I I mean rippers are probably a good choice Spencer's might be a good choice. Like, archers deal a lot of damage and a decent range, but they aren't... They aren't that tough. Actually, Spencer's already looking pretty strong. Just in terms of outranging the archers. But then it's one archer, so it's... it's it, the scaling does matter. What is... Like, so, Dan Warrior... I like the pressure on the southwest. North side's kind of open. Is right. Just could really let that hit them. But yeah, fencers pulling back. I'm not really sure why. I guess because of the bulkhead. That is a bit of a threat. To be fair. Oh, almost got radar. I like. The, I mean, hey, you got radar at least. Oh yeah, it was absolutely the bulkheads. Now, I guess Mono Bulkhead, probably a lot of Scorchers. Is that what we're seeing? 
Yeah, you know, Archer Bulkhead. That's a tricky composition to deal with. So, with that, the Bulkhead... Now, that makes Ripper's life a little bit harder. Raptor would probably still be fine, though. Fencers are the ones that really run into problems against Bulkheads. Scorcher Dart would probably do the trick. Although, Fencers are good against Archers. So I don't know, Scorcher Fencer? Kind of got to split the attention that way, but it might work. Either way, Dan Warrior is pretty solid economy-wise. They do have a bit too much metal for the production. Not the Caretaker coming up, at least. Taking care of that. But, yeah, a little bit of a problem there. Ooh. Opening up the side. Where's the commander? Oh, Ezra's oh, commander getting getting that geothermal plant and losing everything else in the process. Of course, the bulkhead's coming in to try to take it out. These fencers may be dead. I uh, don't think there's any real knowledge here. No, no, no. There's, there's no real radar coverage of that section of the map. There is radar coverage, just not of that specific section of the map. So the bulkheads coming in are completely unknown, and that will be an issue. I don't I might be able to get out. Hard to say. Oh no, R F rippers are definitely the way to go. To get rid of archers. So yeah, ripper scorcher might actually really, really work well against archer head. Ooh, that geo plant! That geo plant! It's it, the explosion is gonna be it's gonna be bad. Is there's commander at least still alive? But yeah, that's bulkheads coming in though to save the day, and there is not much these forces can do. Suicide mission to take out the commander. Well, I mean they succeeded in committing suicide. That's about it. Not really a thing to be proud of. So with that, Israel's commander is secure. Their northwest, well damaged, can still be resecured. And now, I think Dan Warrior's got to be a bit worried about the north side themselves. Is right going along the attack? Going on the attack along the northern corridor. Dan Warrior doesn't have anything to defend that. They have gotten their production up to deal with it, but then again, they just did. Whereas Izzeride is well ahead of the necessary caretakers. Dan Warrior still needs one or two more. They have 50 metal per second coming in here without reclaim. Like, they could use another caretaker here. Like, why this is this storage not a caretaker? I don't know. Should be a caretaker. Send where his commander got. Light particle beam? Not bad. Not a bad choice. The bulkheads are still very tough. It's going to be difficult to work with, but yeah, it might work. So the northern assault has at least been stymied, but now it's... Shifted over to a southern assault, and there's nothing there. Dan Warrior, however, their commander's going to survive this. They can then reclaim, rebuild a bunch of stuff. Again, really need more caretakers, or to note, to have... Use repeat build! I don't know why people don't use repeat build. You can use repeat build. It's not a bad thing. If you need to just... If you need to stop, just have a clear queue hotkey. And then just change what's being built. I don't know why people don't use repeat queue. Especially when already, like I said, they don't have enough caretakers to actually use all the metal they've got coming in. I mean, the storage certainly helps to avoid excess, but still, like, you, there's timing, right? The amount of time it takes to build that is lowered by using more metal. By using more build power. So, you, sure, you use the metal eventually, but this is a time-sensitive game. You want to use it as quickly as possible. Anyway, though, Commander, about to go down? Yes, about to go down. Mazerite's not going to be able to escape that. Geoplant soon to follow. These Scorchers will not survive the explosion. Oh, there we go. Being a bit clever. No, they still don't survive the explosion. They still are dead. Geoplants are a suicide mission for radar units to kill. That you got to be careful about that. Still is right on the south. Really nothing stopping them. Damn, Warrior does have a stronger economy, though. But again, they just don't have the production to make that work.
still is right. Again, they have they have potentially stronger army, but I think after this one is destroyed, it's it is going to be tougher. Is right's or fallen back a bit, forced to rebuild. I'm surprised it hadn't before, but yeah, they do have the reclaim though. They can use that to get themselves back on track. Dan Warrior's commander. Ooh, sniper rifle. Got the phantom shock rifle on top of well the light particle beam. So yeah, good anti heavy, decent riot. Or, wait, why aren't you attacking? Oh, shit. No, that's... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. The commander's down. That is Dan Warrior's real ace, in the, ace up their sleeve. And that is... as done. Oh, no. Oh, shoot. Well, Dan Warrior's done. At least Dan Warrior's north side is done. They can reclaim some of it. But again, they do not have enough caretakers in their main base. They can't make the most of the reclaim they're using. They're accessing with storage, too. I mean, their list dummies are being of some use. I mean, they often are. It's not like it's dummies are a useless unit. They're just kind of risky sometimes. Well, you lose the dummy, you lose the unit has captured, and, well, I'd rather the unit has captured goes back to the opposing side. However, that existing metal advantage might still give Dan Warrior the advantage. But again, use repeat build. Use repeat build. Yeah. So, with... Oh, Shock Rifle replaces Particle Beam. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Oftentimes that sort of thing does happen. A lot of... Weapons for commanders are done alongside, but yes, yeah, some of them do replace existing weapons. And uh, Northern Quarter now without the commander, that is completely vulnerable. And that is an easy way to get a kill. Just go along, or get a win. Just go along the side here, all the way down, and into the main base. And then you're good. This is how it goes. I mean, there are at least lotuses there to be of some, to be a defensive option to help. But once the boys get in, it's not going to matter, and then the bulkhead will take them all out. Still, not a particularly fast assault, so there is time for Dan Warrior to come along the south side here, take out Israelite's forces, and that is going to be going to be handy. Not sure how effective it's going to be, but it does distract a lot of the defenses. Get rid of metal extractors. Gets rid of. It gets an opening. I mean, really, it's a. I don't think it's even only a scouting tool. Honestly, there's not a whole lot else that it helps with. Oh no, the ducks are gonna get rid of the dummies. That is gonna suck. Yeah, the ducks have the dummies dead to rights. The scout's gonna go down, and the bulkhead. Oh, and all the fences go down in the process. So I gotta be careful with Dominatrices. If they if they get killed, that can ruin your entire army. And now Dan Warrior has to fall back. And the north side has been heavily damaged. Mostly energy, though. It's pretty easy to rebuild. And there's still a mason up north, so it won't be a really won't be a particularly insurmountable task to rebuild, but it's still annoying. However, Dan Warrior has decided to start taking advantage of their metal income. Getting a plate, getting a few more caretakers. And getting a gunship factory on top of that. Fencers along the north side, again, providing a lot of pressure. The, the rippers on the south side still going. I mean, it's a risky move, but it might work. Are the boys able to come in range? That's not really the recommended solution. I mean, yeah, boys are going to work here, but they work better by outranging the opponent. Still, though, is right. Yeah, this economic deficit has come to bite them. Right. Dan Warrior lost a lot, took a lot of damage from attrition, but they managed to hold on to their metal. They managed to hold on to all their production facilities. They didn't use them as efficiently as they could have, perhaps, but they still use them well enough to keep them alive. And now, Izzeride is kind of in a bit of a last stand situation. We'll be able to get rid of the Mason over to the south, open that up. Fortunately, there's nothing... Oh, there is a conch behind doing some reclaim. Like, two or three conches doing reclaim around Isaride's base would still help just bring things back a little bit. Ah, okay, that's where he's the jumpers. Get the archers in right next to the fencers, take them out that way. 
Yeah, well, it got rid of the fencers at least. The archers are still kind of a thing. Sorry, the archers, the locusts are still kind of a thing, along with the ripper. But that's not really doing all that much good. However, again, Israel still, it's the attrition. It's, they're losing out gradually. They are managing to take the south again, but they aren't rebuilding behind it. They aren't securing it in any meaningful way. They are reclaiming a bunch, which is nice. Though they are running out of energy to actually use that reclaim with. But yeah, they at least have that. Gives them some room to get back in this game. But honestly, Dan Warrior, they're kind of at the... They're at the edge of victory here. If they send the dummy, if the dummy actually takes the factory, that would be a, that'd be hilarious. I have done that. Ooh, lobster, lobster capture for no real avail. Fling in the rippers. No, okay, that's not gonna work. Man, I guess cap the bulkheads is something. Let's cap the factory. I don't know. It's always fun to cap the factories. I mean, it's almost as fun as capping commanders, but the commanders are both dead, so factories is the best, next best thing. And I have done that. It is fun. And that is it. Israel throws in the towel. Dan Warrior just had the advantage from the beginning. I mean, early expansion and early aggression. It's a little shaky at first. There was a while where there was absolutely an army advantage in favor of Israel. But Israel wasn't able to take advantage of that to take out Dan Warrior's expansions, and as a result, Dan Warrior just kept their economy going, while at the same time, Dan Warrior was consistently raiding the northwest and provided tons of pressure on the south side, so there wasn't really anywhere Israel could expand outside of this little box, which clearly is not enough to actually do any meaningful construction. So yeah, that is that. So we will have one more match today, another request, the last one. It is going to be between, or it's going to be between Danielson and Reinhardt is going to be on Otago. And Reinhardt... I think both of them are kind of fans, but Reinhardt... I, what I'm going to look for is Radar. Because Reinhardt will often ma uh, make comments in my YouTube videos about Radar. So we'll see if Reinhardt builds Radar. Hopefully they do, because they, honestly, people... People could build more Radar. It's really useful. And it's very cheap. Anyhow, that is that, so stay tuned. We'll be back in a couple minutes.